British Member of Parliament Jo Cox was attacked in her constituency in northern England shortly after noon on Thursday. Local media say a man shot and stabbed her outside a library in Burstall near Leeds where she was meeting local people. Eyewitnesses describe hearing screams. They were not normal screams then. They were right panicking. And then like when we looked down the road, there was a woman laid on the floor. A man in his 50s was arrested at the scene and a number of weapons recovered by police. Cox was taken to a nearby hospital, but doctors couldn't save her. I am now very sad to have to report that she has died as a result of her injuries. Before going into further detail, I would like to express our deepest sympathies to her family and friends at this tragic time. Police say another man at the scene was lightly wounded. And whilst we celebrate our diversity... Cox has been an MP since last May, a member of the opposition Labour Party. We've lost a wonderful woman. We've lost a wonderful member of parliament. But our democracy will go on. Her work will go on. Cox, like most in her party, supported Britain staying in the European Union. She has been vocal on the issue ahead of a referendum on it next week. Cox's family were out campaigning on a flotilla on the River Thames yesterday. Since the news of the shooting, both the Leave and Remain camps announced that they would suspend their campaigns. Prime Minister David Cameron cancelled his planned rally in Gibraltar Thursday night, saying it's right that all campaigning has been stopped after the terrible attack on Joe Cox. A local councillor who knew Cox spoke to CNN shortly after the attack. I'm absolutely stunned. Um, and as you probably would realise, I'm incredibly upset as well, you know, that um, a young woman's being attacked in this way and she obviously has um, a husband, young children and family. It's, it's heartbreaking. Just hours later, Cox's husband tweeted this picture of her along the River Thames. The motive of her attacker is not yet clear. We've just received the news of uh, Joe Cox's death, and this is, as you can imagine, an absolute shocking uh, revelation. Uh, my thoughts are with her and her family, with Brendan and their children and the wider family. Um, this is unprecedented, uh, and we uh, it's just unbelievable. Uh, I don't think anyone could have imagined that something like this could have happened to such a, an incredible, courageous, um, kind uh, and committed uh, member of parliament um, who was killed in the line of duty. And at a constituency meeting, um, she was a very strong local MP, wasn't she? And um, just says so much about her that she would die in a situation like that, so normal, so everyday, yeah. so her. Yes, and it's it's um, while Britain, you know, Britain has um, historically not had the sort of political assassinations, which this, you know, this is a, this is a murder of a member of parliament, Stephen Timms, who was attacked and survived, thankfully. Uh, that was the last um, uh, time where uh, a member of parliament was uh, targeted in this way, uh, you know, in a life-threatening way, and. Uh, you know, we all have to reflect on what these, this means for, our, for the safety of public representatives, um, for our politics. Um, this is deeply disturbing. Uh, my thoughts uh, and prayers are with, with Jo and her family. Jo had an incredible record of achievement. She was um, a tireless campaigner in her work uh, at Oxfam um, uh, in tackling poverty in international development, speaking up for human rights. She continued that work in Parliament. When she arrived uh, in Parliament, she um, made waves working across party as well as with all her colleagues in Parliament, uh, Labour colleagues, and she was very much loved uh, by uh, everybody in Parliament and admired by everybody in Parliament, and you, you will have seen that in the remarks that colleagues have been making across party. Uh, only uh, only uh, this week she sent a wonderful message to some of us colleagues um, of her husband with a friend in the River Thames with their children um, on the um, campaign, uh, the European referendum campaign um, in the um, 
in the Thames, uh, the in-out um, um, boat race. And it was a beautiful photograph, and she was so proud um, of her children and her husband. And she's an incredible, incredible been an incredible parliamentarian, but also a human rights activist, but a great mum and a great friend to so many of us. My name is Herman Tilke. My team and me, we are designing Formula One tracks. We have already designed 18 tracks. 11 of them are in the Formula One calendar this year. This is a street circuit of Baku. When we start to design a Formula One circuit, first of all, we have to make our own feeling for the land. How is the feeling of the land? How is the atmosphere? And then we start designing for, yeah, for the detail. The first area which is really very unique and very interesting is the first corner because we have almost two kilometers of acceleration here. So the cars coming here with more than 340 kilometers per hour, breaking hard to 120 for this corner. And this will be overtaking and all what you need for Formula One, it will be fantastic. And also this is just in front of the pit building and in front of the main grandstand. From this part, the circuit becomes really very narrow to nine meters. And then even here, when we pass the old city wall, the circuit is only seven and a half meters wide. This is unique for a Formula One circuit. In this area, we had couple stones but we cannot use coupled stones for Formula One surface because uh, it will be very, very slippery when it's raining. First of all, we cover the coupled stones with a geotextile and after we do sand on it. Sand because of the coupled stones are not so even, so we make it even. And then we do asphalt on it. And this looks really very simple, but it's not because it's a three-dimensional thing and after to do it again for every year. This track shows the beauty of, of Baku. The beauty of the circuit is outstanding because of this environment. We have the sea, we have the corniche, we have the historical part, it's uh, protected by UNESCO. And that's really unique to show something such a historical place. It's Formula One. <laughs> 